live from WTVO Rockford and your home team. Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Protesters gather outside the Rockford Family Planning Center. The abortion clinic on Auburn Street is now seeing patients. Governor J.B. Pritzker begins his second term leading Illinois. We take a look at the Inauguration Day events. And gas prices in the state line continue to climb. The reason experts believe that could change soon. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. The Rockford Family Planning Abortion Clinic is now open. After months of preparation, the clinic is the first in Rockford in more than a decade. This gives women in the state line another option for pregnancy care, but not everyone agrees with its message. Protesters were outside the building. Jess Lipson stopped by the clinic. Jess, what did staff have to say about finally opening? Eric and Mimi, administrators are glad because they believe they're giving women in the area a place to make a decision on family planning needs. They stress it's important to create a safe and private place Demonstrators want people to know about the lives they are being, they say, are being taken inside those doors. I want this to work. I want it to be the place where women can get what they need. Rockford Family Planning Center is the first abortion clinic in the city in over a decade. Dr. Dennis Christensen, who ran a clinic years ago on Broadway, is behind this one. The only employees are a nurse and administrator Meg Larkin. The fact that we have a center now again where people can come in in a safe, uh, private environment is a gift. This clinic is solely medical abortions, which uses a pill, not surgery. And the option is only open to pregnancies 11 weeks or less. Monday morning, a group of people, many who told me they are pro-life, held signs outside the clinic, and they plan to be there every day. Well, well for one, and uh, for reparation, for all those lives that are being lost, God, God gives life. and. We are not in a position to be taking life. Larkin stresses they have security for the women who come through their doors, wanting to make it as comfortable as possible for them. We put up a screen on the outside on the porch so that people, when they're coming in, uh, can't be seen clearly by the people that are uh, the protesters that are standing on the street. While abortion is an option at the clinic, Larkin's main objective is to give these women guidance make sure that they're uh, actually this is what they want this isn't about how many do we get in in a day this is about how we can help women they may decide to do adoption they may decide to do uh, to keep the the pregnancy they may decide to have the abortion and whichever they decide is what we want for them the clinic officially opened friday larkin says they have been receiving numerous calls since then and they are expecting many women from Wisconsin and Iowa because of the legal restrictions in those states. Eric and Mimi? Jess, thanks. It's Inauguration Day in Springfield. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker took the oath of office for his second term. Governor Pritzker used his speech to highlight what he calls his first term accomplishments like balancing the budget and raising minimum wage. The state also legalized recreational marijuana and protected reproductive rights for women. Pritzker also outlined some of his administration's agenda for the next four years. As Illinois continues its progress, overcoming our historical fiscal challenges and a deadly global pandemic, I come to you with an agenda as ambitious and bold as our people are, thinking not only about the next four years, but about the next 40. Our long-term ambitions must begin with a focus on the people for whom we are building. Other state constitutional officers were also sworn in at the inauguration ceremony. Governor Pritzker also said in his speech that a ban on assault weapons would be coming very soon. Whether that's this week is still yet to be seen. The Senate spoiled the House's celebration when it introduced their own assault weapons ban proposal. The proposal drew major criticism from Governor Pritzker, the Speaker, and advocates because it does not require people who already own assault weapons to register them. The Senate caved to the pressure and added those provisions back in. There's still some negotiating left to go, but they are, are much closer to a compromise than they were yesterday. The House bill was a critical first step in this conversation. We've been working with advocates, uh, poring over the particulars. There are some concerns, for instance, that the list of weapons that would re be required to be uh, endorsed um, is outdated. 
The two chambers are also fighting over plans to expand abortion access. The Senate also has its own language, but it does not have the same policies around gender-affirming care that the House proposal has. The trial for the Winnebago mother accused of medically abusing her children has been delayed. Catherine Williams' bench trial is scheduled for March 27th. The 53-year-old faces 24 charges. That includes attempted murder and aggravated battery to a child. Prosecutors say for more than a decade, Williams subjected her two children, then 13 and 11, to medical procedures the kids did not need. Treatments included surgeries, medication, and hospice care. One child was reportedly confined to a bed and wheelchair. Doctors say that caused permanent tendon damage. Williams' lawyer claims the children were born with serious medical problems. Everything his client told doctors over the years was accurate, and the treatments were needed. Portions of the Winnebago County Courthouse are now open. This after a November fire shut down the building. Fourth floor courtrooms and the first floor traffic courtroom are open. Access to the state's attorney's office, public defender's office, coroner, and jury commission are available as well. Many meetings and hearings will continue to relocate or move online. Administrators say spirits are high after a process that took longer than expected. Uh, it's been a complicated process involving a number of specialists, including a remediation company, an industrial hygienist, and officials from the city of Rockford uh, who have been able to give us the assurance uh, that we're returning in a phased-in approach uh, appropriately. As for the rest of the building, administrators say there's currently no timetable for when those will reopen. Rock River Disposal started collecting Christmas trees today. The company will take trees until the 19th in Rockford. If you don't put your tree in a bag, place it alongside your regular garbage and remove all decorations. If you do bag the tree or put it in bundles, it should not weigh more than 50 pounds. Trees taller than four feet should be cut in half. You'll be paying more at the pump as gas prices in Rockford rise slightly. The price of gas rose five cents in the past week. The average price of gas in the four cities now three dollars and thirty-nine cents. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest gas station was selling gas at two dollars and ninety-six cents, while the most expensive station was selling gas at three dollars and fifty-nine cents. Experts say just like last week, the rise in price is due to previous refinery outages caused by the cold weather the week of Christmas. They are optimistic that when refineries get back online, we could see the increases slow down as we head into the time of year when gasoline demand is at its weakest. Today begins a new chapter in Washington after a lengthy battle for Speaker last week. Monday officially marks the first day Republicans have control of the House. Raquel Martin shows us lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are worried about even bigger battles on the horizon. House Republicans say they're ready to get to work. Checks and balances on the Biden administration and working on the priorities of securing the border, inflation, getting this economy back on track. Illinois Republican Congressman Darren LaHood says he's confident his party can come together to govern, despite the most drawn out speaker selection since the Civil War. I'm optimistic. But Republicans face one more hurdle approving a new package of House rules. Lawmakers who oppose Kevin McCarthy's bid to be speaker negotiated several changes, including a measure allowing a single Republican to call for his removal and greater influence over which bills get a vote. It's not controversial. Our members have voted on it once already, and I expect it'll pass. But legislative affairs expert Dr. Casey Burgett says the rule changes guarantee trouble ahead. The irony is, like, this is the easy part. He says the new rules will make it harder to advance bills that keep the government and the economy running. Particularly with the debt limit, which both sides, any reasonable person will tell you, will be absolutely catastrophic for the U.S. economy. Right, so we're talking jobs, we're talking recessions, potentially depression, 401ks halved if not more. On Sunday's Meet the Press, House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries said he's concerned the new Republican majority could do real harm. What is going to be a problem is if the American people will be held captive over the next two years. But says he's willing to find common ground. In Washington, Raquel Martin. Now, your first worn weather forecast from meteorologist Savannah Brito.
Good evening, everyone. The start of our work week was actually very nice. If you like above average temperatures and the sunshine, both of those made an appearance and a return out there today. So far of 2023, besides today, we actually had mostly cloudy skies, 100% cloud cover. But today, by having 30% or less, that is classified as a mostly sunny day. By having about 20% of the sun out today, or cloud cover, I should say, we did go down in January 9th as a mostly sunny day out there, but since clouds have already increased. So we did have lower level clouds clear out last night, which were stratus clouds. Those are blanket clouds that we see across the state line. Those did move out quickly last night, leaving only higher level cirrus clouds across the area. So we did see mostly sunny skies, but we did have stratus clouds the last several days, making it mostly cloudy. Those are already moving back in right now. This is a loop over the last six hours. So early this morning after that patchy fog did let up, we did see mostly sunny skies into the early afternoon, but clouds did thicken up and that's going to continue to be the case the next several days. Actually, we're not really talking about seeing much sunshine or a good chance of that until we get to next weekend. So this coming Saturday temperatures, though, not only daytime highs, but actually overnight lows have been well above average. We should be around 15 degrees or 16 degrees for overnight lows. We were 31 degrees. That was New Year's Day heading into the following uh, Monday and then the temperature Temperatures did continue with that trend at least for the six first six days of the month, but then we did see temperatures switch back to a below normal pattern at least our daytime highs in the afternoon because we only made it into the mid to upper 20s on the 7th and the 8th. But today those 40s did make a return in some areas. So today January 9th will go down as an above average day and it was actually well above average. We should be at 29 degrees. We we're at 41 in Rockford 43. That was the warmest temperature in Janesville. There were a couple areas though that did only make it into the upper 30s. That does include DeKalb at 39. Freeport was at 39. Same with Monroe. And then Galena, the coolest temperature out there this afternoon by making it only to 38. Since then, though, temperatures have cooled. No one's in the 40s anymore. Everyone's dropping in the mid to upper 30s. We're at 38 in Rockford, 34 in Rochelle, 37 in Sterling, 36 in Galena, and over in Savannah. So we had patchy fog this morning, saw that clear out later in the morning in the early afternoon, but we are seeing some of that coming back, back into play. Rockford's the only one at full visibility at 10 miles, same with Monroe, but we are seeing a lower visibility in Freeport. They're down to seven, six in Galena. So patchy fog, that'll be an issue out there tonight. I don't think it'll get super dense though, but there's not going to be a whole lot of mixing. Our winds are going to increase though somewhat overnight. That should help mix that out once we head for daybreak though, late tonight into early tomorrow morning. Mostly cloudy skies out of our SkyTrack camera sponsored by Bryden Motors that is located up north of here in Beloit. So thick cloud cover out there tonight into tomorrow. Maybe a very few hints of blue to our skies, but I do think it's going to be partly sunny to mostly cloudy. Wednesday, that would be our next chance of precipitation, possibly seeing some freezing drizzle. That's going to be the case in the early morning as temperatures are going to get cold. Then Thursday, Friday, that would be our next better chance at rain. Right now, models do have that low pressure system in the track south of here. That would be where the bigger impact is going to be. 39, though, that'll be your high tomorrow up to the 40s again on Wednesday. They do take a little bit of a dip Thursday into Friday due to a cold front, but then they do... Uh, switch back to a well below or well above average temperature pattern. We're in the 40s by Sunday, and then Eric Mimi 45 Monday. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. Now that the Bears have secured the top pick in the draft, they could choose a quarterback. I mean, Ohio State's J.C. Stroud and Alabama's Bryce Young are tempting options. Would the Bears dare do that with Justin Fields already on the roster? Well, Fields told reporters today he feels like he is the guy already, and the Bears are his team. I feel like it's you know, already mine. Um, the guys in here, they know how hard I work. They know what I want to accomplish. And, uh, you know, just my mindset overall. So I'm um, really just trying to get guys on the same page, that, that mindset, that culture to where, you know, no matter what we go through, nothing can phase us. Um, and really just having that swagger, having that confidence going into every game. Well, are you ready for another off-season of speculation about whether or not Aaron Rodgers will be back with a pack next season? This could drag right up to the draft at the end of April, if not longer. Rodgers clearly isn't ready right now to share his thoughts on what he might do. Now, as Dean Lowry finished as a Green Bay Packer, he is a free agent and will have the option to sign elsewhere. Do the Packers even want him back? His biggest asset is his durability. He's only missed three games in his seven seasons in Green Bay. 
He had 43 tackles this season before going on injured reserve with a calf injury for the Packers' final two games. Lutheran graduate James Robinson is also a free agent, and you can bet he won't be back in New York with the Jets. The Jets made him inactive for their final six games, even though he was healthy. In the four games that he did play for the Jets, he carried the ball only 29 times for 85 yards. As it turns out, it would have been much better off had the Jaguars not traded him. He'd be in the playoffs with them and certainly would have played a bigger role than he did with the Jets, even with the emergence of Travis Etienne. Well, one Nick 10 school is looking for a new head football coach. Jefferson Jake Arnold has resigned from his head coaching duties with the Jayhawks. He was their head coach the last four years. During that time, the Jayhawks won five games and lost 26. Last season, they were 2-7. and seven. But they did make good strides last season, especially with a strong passing attack with sophomore quarterback Sebastian Bracius, who set all sorts of school passing records. We did finally see the sunshine make an appearance again out there today, but clouds did since increase as of mid-afternoon, and we are going to continue to see that, unfortunately, the rest of tonight and in the days to come. So we're really not talking about a good chance of sunshine, at least mostly sunny skies out of the next couple of days. 39 tomorrow, 29 will be the low heading into Wednesday morning. That's the next chance of rain. Precipitation could be a light mix on Wednesday morning. A couple slick spots, but temperatures are going to rise into the 40s again. Mimi, Eric. All right, thanks, Savannah. And thank you for spending some of your time with us. Stay safe.